Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, what, is, what does it mean to ask to be a nukt, to be nothing? What's that? What does it mean to ask to be a nukt, to be nothing? Yeah, the whole tariqah. <laughs> so, the, this is the way of the tariqah to come to the tariqah and ask to efface oneself with whatever this material world is trying to build us to be something. The servant willingly has to reduce themselves to be nothing, nothing in the presence of their Lord that in the face of Allah then nothing. In the presence of those whom Allah loved of the Prophets and the, the holy companions the Ahlul Bayt, nothing. In the presence of awliyaullah nothing. So a continuous state of effacing oneself into an ocean of nothingness and that becomes all these teachings. You have to buy three books of timeless reality and begin to read it and give two copies to others. So it means that you have to have read these teachings and that's the whole Sufi path, inshaAllah. Mm. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa Thank you for the amazing uh, Q&A on smart contracts. In light of smart contracts, could you please expand on how the shaykh helps in writing the last chapter? The last chapter, the understanding from the last chapters is that that's our first chapter. Is that our life, how do we want this life of ours to end? If we write the last chapter first and then our whole life is how to get there. And now they have business people teaching the same system that you have to visualize where's your goal, what, what are you trying to achieve? So it means that the last chapter is, what do I want to achieve and how do I want Allah to be pleased with me? And that becomes my goal with the power of manifestation and contemplation. How are you going to make that goal manifest? And then you write that chapter and put it all around every note and post-it note around your life that, I want to achieve this reality, I want to achieve the proximity to Prophet I want to achieve the servanthood of Prophet I want to achieve the naz… naz As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And the rida of Prophet and I want to achieve these Divinely oceans and dresses and lights and knowledges that Allah want to bestow upon the servant, I want to achieve that. Then every day look at yourself and say, are you closer to that goal or did you move farther away? And every action that you're going to choose for that day, did it take you closer to that goal or farther away from that goal? And if you can take a daily accounting, you'll find yourself moving closer to that goal or at least realizing that you're nowhere near your goal. But most people when they start to see themselves not achieving that goal, they'll stop their daily accounting. And that's the importance of the daily accounting is that I have a goal and I'm going to reach that. And every day I'm going to ask myself, am I closer? The choices I'm making and every single choice that I just made this choice did it draw me cl closer to this reality, yes or no? And then I'm going to adjust everything daily. So I wanted to get closer to Prophet I made the wrong choice, I'm not 
doing something right now that would draw me closer, I'm going to give some sadaqah or zakat to correct that error and then recalibrate myself to come back into the direction of service and good character and love and muhabbat and I'm going to do some service, make sure at night I'm, I'm posting links and doing what I can. So all of those then become a, a daily calibration of are we getting closer to what we want or further. So alhamdulillah if the one whom can draw closer and daily is uh, becoming more and more successful in achieving that reality then they should find uh, success in Allah's rida and satisfaction and they begin to feel the success, the energy, the nearness and the proximity inshaAllah to that uh, Divine reality. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Can we do charity to non-Muslim people who are feeding poor in countries where we can't send charity to Fatima Zara Helping Hand? What was that? Can we do charity to non-Muslim people who are feeding poor in countries where we can't send charity to Fatima Zara Helping Hand? Yeah, two different issues. The feeding of people doesn't matter what their religion. So when we feed, we're feeding people on the street, nobody dares to ask what their religious belief is, that, that's a completely separate issue. But can you give to a non-Muslim organization? No. You would be clearly supporting a different faith and a different belief and, and you're empowering them to go around mainly to Muslim countries and tell people that, uh, we'll give you to eat but wear this cross. So don't, don't do that. We tell you don't even give to Wahhabi organizations because they're doing the same thing. Every organization if, if you've understood what we've been teaching is that if somebody calls and says, Shaykh send us money, we want to feed people in Uganda, I said, no, we're not interested in sending money. This is not about just trying to spread money around. This is about our students having their faith in action. So I want the students to wear the shirt and hit the road and as a, as a reality they build their faith because that's what's important to us is one they're building their faith and two people are being fed. As a result they're doing da'wah to the people on the street, oh this is the shaykh's teaching, this is Nashbandi's teachings and I'm the evidence of the, the effect and the benefit of that teaching. So everybody's doing da'wah. So if you give to a Wahhabi organization they're doing the same thing. They go into Muslim areas and say, Akhi the reason we have to feed you is Allah's angry with you, put your tasbih away. And what you're doing is bid'ah, what you're doing is shirk and they really reprogram people's minds and destroy their faith. So definitely you don't want your ten dollars out there destroying people for some bread that a hungry person has to eat. And the same for other organizations that they would tell the children that if we're going to feed you, put this cross on you and here. Out of the fear these poor people have to eat, they put something on their body and then they're eating. Well, why would you want to be the one who's giving them money to do that? When we don't do that ourselves, we don't tell anybody that you have to accept Islam right now before I give you this burrito. We clearly and freely give everybody food but if you like what we're doing, you're more than welcome to go to our websites. So it's completely different. In Los Angeles the, the gentleman uh, Asim out there and his brother Habib, they're going to all sorts of children's organizations, Christian organizations. Chicago we give to all the Christian organizations and Catholic diocese, we're giving thousands of uh, ready to eat meals. So we make no distinction. So by supporting us we feed everyone but by supporting other organizations their da'wah is the danger, not the bread that people get. The bread is equal to everybody's mouth who's hungry. But when that bread comes with a cost and that's from your money that they're having to now choose their and lose their Islam, no, don't do that please. Especially when, when we're doing what we're doing, why, why would you go left and right inshaAllah? Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Does it affect our spiritual reality 
by showing yourself on social media, doing good deeds and representing the Shaykh? Yeah, it, too much everything is in, in moderation. So too much of you know grandstanding and too much of uh, emphasizing on the person, it can become nafsani and, and then very egotistic and every good deed having to have one photo of it. No, is that's not good so yes that would be correct that that's against our teaching. But in general to show the group is out there as a factor in motivating. So there are some people sitting at home and say, you know I can do that, it's not that difficult. It's not difficult to get our shirt and go to the grocery store, buy a piece of or a loaf of bread and go buy some uh, peanut butter or cheese, cheese and mayonnaise and make 10 sandwiches, give them away. And as soon as you put that picture not highlighting you like here's the sandwich and blah, 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 but this I'm giving food out to people, you'll motivate somebody else sitting on the couch say, I can do that too. It's really not that hard for six dollars you can buy a loaf of bread and some cheese and go out and feed 10 people. And that's all that we want is to prove to Allah that this is our faith Ya Rabbi and grant my faith to become real. This is about manifestation. That's what we said last night if you, if you really got it and you understood it or if you contemplated, we are asking for immense oceans of manifestation to begin to open. You want to be able to, to make sure that you have a connection in which you feel the connection. You feel the opening of that connection. You, you, you feel that you have a dialogue with the shaykh and the heavenly realm. And you need that connection if sickness should come to you, you need that connection if distress and difficulty should come to you and you're definitely going to need that connection when difficulty opens upon this earth. So that, that reality of manifestation is an immense key right now. If you don't have it, imagine trying to build it when the earth is collapsing and in the middle of immense distress is very difficult. But to manifest that now and develop that now then alhamdulillah that's, that's what's necessary. With that barakah of that connection you begin to feel all the emanations and everything. You feel that your support is not strong enough, that you're not involved enough, you are not giving enough, your insurance is not covering you correctly, your actions are not covering you correctly and therefore the dunya begins to inflict its difficulty. So with that connection is all the inspiration and the whole tariqah is based on that connection. Because as soon as they have that connection every inspiration comes to them. The, ah, I gotta do something, I gotta move from something, I gotta go here, I gotta do this, I gotta send out this, I gotta give this. And those are what's important is that the soul is receiving its understanding and is connecting. Without that then everything becomes very difficult and continuously what we said you're either, what is it, proactive or reactive. Either you're going to take the first step and be in control of the situation or you're reactive person. You wait for a difficulty to come and you're always trying to resolve difficulties. You know one problem to the next problem to the next problem. But that's not a good system in life. Proactive is that from what I have coming in I owe a certain amount of that to zakat. For the time in my life I owe a certain amount of that time to be of service. For the time that Allah has given to me I have to be meditating and educating and understanding for the reality of my soul and for my connection. And when I'm not doing that then I'm continuously dealing with problems and that's what we don't want. We want people to be ahead of the game and feeling the barakah and the benefit and not continuously trying to fix problems. And that's what we said, is that this was a pretty important talks in the last few nights, that's why it's difficult to keep popping ahead with more. It almost feels uh, shameful that we talk on deep subjects and we just keep going to more and more and more and more. I don't think anybody even asked about those questions and those subjects that we talked about. The encryption, the shaykh holds an encryption key, the manifestation and to witness and believe. If you truly understand that then you understand the importance of the shaykh. 
And if you truly understand that, you understand the importance of your relationship with the shaykh. If you think you're going to get through that door yourself by just clicking your heels and hoping it's going to happen, mm, doesn't happen that way. If Allah makes it an exception, that's an exception. But the tariqah rule is then what was described. That then should answer many questions from people that if their responsibility is to make that doorway of belief, then they have to make again that doorway of belief to the presence of Prophet then if they're truly yearning for that reality then they have to visualize the shaykh is at that doorway, in the doorway and that their whole… why in the doorway is that you can't go past that without understanding him. That's why we put the shaykh in the doorway so that you don't think you're going to go through over his head but you have to have a relationship with him in that doorway so that that fires and that light is reaching to you. That knowledge that you're asking, these are encrypted contracts that have to be sent into the blockchain of your heart and very secure. Allah knows every single contract and that's why the hadith what we talked about or the saying from Imam Ali is if you even learn alif from somebody, you owe them your life, means you're on a contract with them. And that's the reality, that's why when the shaykh is continuously talking and teaching and talking and teaching, these are contracts that are going out locking onto people's hearts. If they're not understanding the system and just hoping you know things will begin to just open and uh, they'll be sort of going through every doorway they can imagine, then it, it's, it's not that way. That's why the depth of what was discussed should be contemplated and until we can hear some of the questions that come up in the understanding of what was covered then why again throw out 20 more diamonds when we didn't discuss the other two, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Are there hackers in the spiritual realm? Can someone steal your key or corrupt your key? How do you protect your connection? Yeah, that is, there is. That's why the shaykh we gave the analogy for these guys who know this system. The shaykh is a cold storage because I was educated by Mahdi. So what's hot storage? So when you're hot storage anyone can hack into your system because you're online. Anyone online can go into your, your wallet and take everything out. Cold storage is you have the ability to disconnect from any internet. So the shaykh is a, is a cold storage, he's disconnected from anyone other than the Divine, the Presence and Prophet and the hierarchy of saints. So they're all offline. So as soon as you connect their wallet comes to be present with you and begin to convey into your heart. But you're not offline, you're online hot and into a whole system, right? Because uh, until Allah grant you to be mukhlas. Otherwise shaitan's whole goal is to steal your wallet, steal your knowledge so that you're not building your knowledge for yourself but he wants you to dissipate and evaporate that knowledge. And that's when people start to just give it out to people that is not appropriately to be given to. When they begin to post it as if it's from themselves, that's plagiarism, it doesn't count as anything and it's counted against the servant. And then backbiting where they begin to have characteristics of just backbiting all day long and trying to learn on this side and shaitan is pulling them from that side and those are all stealing wallets. I mean shaitan's doing anything he can to take from this person's barakah and blessings and evaporate the account and take the account out. So that, that's the whole game is the shaitan. When we understood that then we're continuously guarding what Allah gave to us until Allah gives us to become mukhlas. Mukhlas means you are now disconnected from that network and that your key is held by you. So that has an important significance. If not, they're still on a network and shaitan is all over them trying to steal it. <clears throat> and there are fake wallets, these are the, the people whom have no connection 
and they're making things up left and right. They even steal the knowledges of shaykhs and they propagate it as their own and, and try to have courses and sell admission to their courses and, and then people think they're going to go to them and, and to, with, with money they're going to get a degree from this institute and they call them heart level one, seer level two and they make this like it's a whole process. And that's not uh, correct and that's not true and nothing will be open from that process. You may give thousands of dollars out and accomplish that and they may tell you you're crowned with the heart level 5 degree and but that's not a degree from Allah and Prophet and that's what's important. We went somewhere and they were talking Reiki and they said even their cat is Reiki level 33. So, yeah, I guess you, if you've paid enough money you can be anything you want. And the cat even achieved that. So these are, you know, these are the imaginal world <coughs> of dunya which can be very sort of imaginal. But the real world is with struggle and strife that, that they have to fight, they have to struggle themselves, they have to, to follow the system. As a result, like we said, the shaykh holds an encryption. So you, you can't get these keys without all of these security checks and anyone who knows this system there's going to be double authentication at every moment they're going to call your number and check who you are and are you really the one logging in. All of what we see now of internet securities that are coming they're not a drop in the understanding of Allah's security. But it should give the seeker an understanding, my goodness if, if the internet and dunya is like this Imagine how Allah is, you can't hack heavenly kingdom. Allah describes that there are shaitan trying to listen and as soon as they try to listen Allah sends a shuhab, shu'ayb, shuhab against them, sends an angel to fire and hit them. So no, no, nobody's stealing anything from Allah So it's a, it's a highly encrypted system in which they have to meditate and contemplate, they have to make their connection. We said the night before and Hajjah Kareem wanted to go deeper into, the Qur'an is reading you, right? That's something deep for people to understand. You think you're reading the Qur'an and what they want us to know is negate yourself. What you're reading the Qur'an? The Qur'an is a secured encrypted book. And the Qur'an is actually reading you and, and as soon as you log on, you open up, you try to retrieve from it, it immediately looks to you and says, no way, you're not anyone worthy of anything and it will only tell you right and wrong, fire punishment, fire punishment, fire punishment. They put the book down scared, they say, what the heck was this, this are all rules and you're going to burn, you're going to… yeah. Because it read the person and gave them what they needed to know, means for you nothing but fire and punishment and they put it down. So it means the, the Qur'an will talk to the person and identify them. Then if you understand our teachings uh, you should be meditating, contemplating, why? Because the Arabic messenger is the Muhammadan light that exists within all the shaykhs. And the shaykhs and the shaykhs and the shaykhs and their shaykhs. Their system of madad and their system of training brought upon them Muhammadun Rasulullah. So they are Muhammadun Rasulullah's light They have the light of Prophet emanating in their entire being. So when they trained in their madad, they trained in their practices, and they began to look to Holy Qur'an and Qur'an looks to them and sees Muhammadun Rasulullah and begins to open for it everything that it needs again to their darajats. And this is just by you to understand the analogy because they don't have to open it. They can connect with their heart to have that light transferred to them and that Qur'an begins to teach them. That kitabullah, right, and Allah gives their category as, kunumal rabbaniyoon, bi rabbaniyoon, 
whom they understood the book and then they taught the book. The book Al-Kitab is who? Is Prophet ﷺ. We said before, you had a book before, then you had a tablet and then you understand the, the knowledge of that tablet can be conveyed to any device now, right? Before I had to walk around with a book because it was only on these pages. Then the technology said, well, oh I can send you a book on here. So now the book doesn't need to exist in any physical spatial matter. The book is a, a knowledge and a light that can go into anything. If I want it to come into here, it will come right into here. So it means now people are understanding the kitab is a light. So the, the kitab of Allah is the Muhammadan light. So then that kitab looks to you and if it sees Muhammadun Rasulullah its encryption opens. Depending upon their Muhammadan light and the degree to their Muhammadan light, the encryption is opening from Muhammad to Muhammad and begins to flow. And that was from just the simple understandings of salawat. We said, when, when we make one salawat upon Sayyidina Muhammad Prophet described that Allah will send my light ten times to you. In the world of light what is ten times? And what is that light coming with? It's coming with the best of what Allah has to offer is the Qur'an. So every salawat is bringing the lights of Qur'an onto your soul because it's the companionship of Al-Kitab, keep the companionship of the book of Allah What's the book of Allah Keep the companionship of Prophet whom he is the custodian of the book, he is the, the manzil of Qur'an. But they didn't understand the Wahhabis so then they walk around with the Kitabullah. And that's why when they speak they're very hard, they're nothing from what we describe. They think that they're walking with the Qur'an but they didn't understand it. Because the Qur'an is not reading them, not accepting them because there's no Muhammadun Rasulullah So they actually walk around with the Furqan and they yell at everybody because that's what they had. The one whom has love and ishq. He's walking with Prophet His companion is Muhammadun Rasulullah the kitab of Allah As a result every salawat he's giving back Qur'an, every salawat he's filling your heart with Qur'an because you are with walking Qur'an. So can you then imagine the immensity of this love and what it's capable of? If you take that love out and people think, you know what, I'm going to walk around with the book that didn't open for me and just becomes a book of harshness and that's not what Allah wanted. That's why we're in need of guidance of awliya. No, the real book of Allah is Sayyidina Muhammad and it must be in your heart, must be in your entire being. And that Prophet begin to convey the realities of Qur'an. So then the beginner begins to read with those lights, the Qur'an is looking to them and sees the traces of the love of Muhammadun Rasulullah and begins to give its inspiration, give its guidance, hudan al-mutaqeen, that this is a, a guidance that begins to come. Who's the guidance? Means this is all the Muhammadan light that comes into the souls and hearts of people, give them inspirations, give them proximity and closeness until they feel the nearness to the word of Allah and that is the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah emanating all around their being. So, inshaAllah very deep, very deep.
reality. InshaAllah dress us and, and bless us from the immensity, immensities of, of these lights and these understandings. And then last days that uh, imagine what type of uloom and knowledges of the Qur'an will be coming with the most highest uh, Muhammadan representative where Mawlana Shaykh was said that uh, a new understanding of Qur'an will be present with the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi because it is the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah coming with the immense, immense openings. Even from now when we talk of ayat of Qur'an these people haven't heard these things. So imagine when the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi is coming and is amongst the community and that Muhammadan light is amongst the community how that Qur'an will begin to speak to people. Not the Qur'an they have written on ink and ink that maybe is not so appropriate on paper but the reality of the light of Holy Qur'an that be flowing into the hearts and souls of people just by their presence and proximity to a Muhammadan light inshaAllah. That section if we can take it out and post it as its own. For the guys who are doing uh, math, if you can post just this one subject that we just talked about on the reality of Qur'an and the reality of the presence of Prophet Assalamualaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Sayyidi Walaykum as uh, Our covenant, Kalu uh, Bala, is it also a smart contract and do our we, shaykh have… Wait, wait, let's start again Chief. what? Uh, our covenant, covenant… Kalu Bala, is it also a smart contract? And do our shaykh has the key and only through shaykh we can know of our promise to Allah? Everything, everything is on a smart contract. <clears throat> That's when we described a, a mu'min can't lie. So, oh, but shaykh everybody lies, Does it? not this lie. What you promised Allah is on a contract locked and when Allah calls you to the heavens He's not going to let you talk, not let us talk. That's why He says, I'd seal their mouth because I'm going to show them their contract because the contract will speak for itself that this is what you promise, this is what you're bound to. You said yes, we sent you on the earth and you pretended like you never made that arrangement. That's the problem. So yes, it's locked. The shaykh role is to take you to a point in which to fulfill your covenant. And you cannot even get close to fulfilling your covenant if you didn't take bayat. And if you didn't take bayat, you didn't really enter into Islam. So we have all those talks. And then we talked about the importance and the reality of bayat and allegiance. How, how can somebody think they entered Islam and they agreed to submit and surrender themselves but they didn't take bayat? Which was the whole of Islam that you had to come and accept Prophet as the Rasul, the Messenger, the Qur'an is, the Quran is your kitab and then who's your guide? And as soon as you accepted that you recited the bayat. And that Allah's hand upon your hand, upon the hand of Prophet and you're bound. So all of that was law, shaitan told people, oh don't do that. So okay now they don't even have a connected Islam. If you're not in a connected Islam where somebody can begin to convey to you what you promised Allah then there's no way they can keep their ahad, their covenant. So yes, that's why the covenant is definitely encrypted. Everyone is bound by that encryption and by that, that contract. Nobody can say, I didn't have one. Allah will raise the servant that, you are kasab, you are like, this is your covenant, this is what you promised. The shaykh's duty is to one, get you to take your bayat, so now that your Islam is real, by listening to the talks get you to go back to what you promised. And, and the promise is all within the same coordinates that you promise to serve. You promise to have a love for Prophet As you achieve that then whom you become will be within your covenant. 
right? So the shaykh has got a bunch of seeds. Why would he tell the seed what it's going to be? Because people are, your next question will probably, well, what is my covenant? But your seed, why would we tell you what you're supposed to be? That's not the duty of the, of the farmer to tell the seed that you're going to be a beautiful tree. The duty is get in the ground. So he takes the seeds and throw them in and the seed just keep trying to come back out. So I think they have like poetries of Rumi that he threw all the lentils in the pot to cook them and one lentil keep jumping out, didn't want to be cooked. And there's a whole shair and a, and a poetry of that. So it's all the same symbolisms. The shaykh's duty is to take all these seeds and say, look the rule for all of us, get in the ground, bury yourself. And each seed, no, 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 unless you tell me what I'm supposed to be. So no matter what I tell you, you could never imagine that. You can't understand the reality beyond yourself of what, you, what your potential will be. And that became our tariqa lives. Nobody said that, oh when you come to tariqa say one day you're going to be teaching people. Oh I was in tariqa running errands. If you would have told me at that time I would have never believed you of what I was going to be or who I was going to be or what I would know or what I would not know and, and anything. So that's not the duty of the shaykh is to tell everybody, oh this is what you're going to be. But uh, don't worry about that but you must surrender your seed into that ground. And that becomes then the basis of all the teaching. That ground and that soil is Muhammadun Rasulullah Annihilate yourself. And as soon as they annihilate and water themselves with their zikr, their good character, their salawats, the majlis of the zikr, all of these are the watering that awliyaullah are putting upon that soil until then these little branches begin to appear. The one whom is successfully serving and, and annihilating themselves and listening to all these teachings, little branches are beginning to appear out of the soil, something completely new. And they know it by people looking at them and say, you don't look anything like this picture from 15, 20 years ago. Because at 20 years ago you were a seed and you had a completely different look. Years later you are completely different, your character is different, your understanding is completely different. And if your tree is beginning to show your knowledge, your wisdom and your realities are completely different. At that time you'll know your role and what you promised Prophet because the fruits of your reality will begin to appear and then that'll be self-evident. But does the shaykh need to tell a bunch of seeds what they're supposed to be? You're going to be a rose, you're going to be a grapefruit, you're going to be a, a, a cantaloupe, you're, you're going to be a pineapple tree. <laughs> pineapple is probably a very painful person, it's hard to hold. But the main thing is to be nothing and when we're nothing and enter into that annihilation everybody's reality will become self-evident by what they are and who they become and that's what's important, that's what the, the true beauty of tariqah because then you have fruits to give humanity and we're coming to a point in which the world is coming into an immense difficulty and even talking with very close uh, relatives and children. Well, how, how, how? Is it? Don't say how. There be things that come out of the ground dressed by Allah that you can't imagine. Whatever you're seeing and people are sitting and watching as, oh my God look these aliens are like this, this like this, this like this. Whatever Allah wants you to understand, to see how these aliens and see their ships and their technology, this country's technology is probably two, three hundred years more advanced than what they're telling their people. With all of that. Allah's infinitely more powerful. If that astonishes you, imagine what Allah is going to open for His servants, their power and their ability. We've described many times before, if Allah opens for His servant, the servants have the capability through their eyes to release a fire. Anything they look at will be burned. If you think they have technology, they have not seen anything of what Allah has brought upon this earth and will bring upon this earth. That there are servants whom their eyes would be like fires. If you thought a dragon was scary, one whom Allah dresses from that reality can't even be comprehended with what power, with what emanations. 
So Allah wants us to see all those things and UFOs and freaky stuff and say, wow, wow, wow. So that what? To be encouraged. If you think that's wow, Allah Allahu Akbar. His Akbar is beyond comprehension of what He's going to give to those whom He loves. Not that you, you see the losing team and be astonished by the losing team, but the losing team should be encouraging you if that the losing team has that, imagine what the winning team has. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam wa rahmatullah Is there a system for knowing that one is at the right door and not imagination? Is there what? Is there a system for knowing that one is at the right door and not imagination? Yeah, you, you can't imagine this door. It's not in anybody's ability. When you're not meant for that door, nothing will open. So that's beyond imagination. So the, the process of tafakkur and contemplation is to make the salawat, make the practices and it's not imagination. In their meditation and tafakkur they begin to visualize the presence of the shaykh. Didn't say talk to him because there are people who not seeing the shaykh but they think they're talking to the shaykh and then they're even hearing answers back to the shaykh. And then they start to hallucinate and come up with, oh those are then multi-imaginal. We're talking about a system in which I'm nothing and I'm in the presence of the shaykh. And in my heart the presence of the shaykh is becoming more and more clear and that I'm not asking anything from dunya and I'm continuously asking to be nothing, to be nothing. As soon as I ask dunya the shaykh is then imaginal, you're talking to yourself, you're asking your own things and giving your own answers back. So no, and if you're not meant to be with the shaykh then nothing will happen, nothing will open. But again if you are listening and in the school of that shaykh then you're there. There's no way for you to be there if you're not meant to be with that shaykh. If others you try to say, hey come listen to this shaykh and they're not interested at all because it's not meant for them. You say, come and see the shaykh, it's not meant for them. Whom Allah guides is then guided and in their guidance they make the connection and they begin to feel the connection. And that's why we go over the parameters of medica meditation. Don't keep saying, I'm going to talk to you, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. No, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. I just want to feel the energy of your presence and that fire is to be dressing me, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And imagine a world and I'm getting this, I'm getting this gift and this is a negate all of these and just an ocean of energy in which energy dresses my heart and my soul and that I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And that when I make the connection I want to know what I did wrong. Not imagine, oh shaykh is telling me this and telling me that, no tell me what I did wrong, what was my bad character for today. So alhamdulillah there's a whole process on the meditation, again get the meditation book, has it all outlined, become an expert in that reality. That is the key for all of what we're teaching. If you truly understood the tafakkur and the contemplation, you master that reality, that becomes the doorway for every opening and, and every dress and, and blessing to come upon the servant inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon. Wa salaamun al mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa. As Surah Al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.